For lo, said the angel, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Lord, open our lips. And our our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory Glory to the Father, Father, and and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all of the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the people. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king. He has made the world so firm it cannot be judged, moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all of the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken on this on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with your joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For all you do, you live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And rise the greatest of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving mouth among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born this day of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
So I'm going to begin today with two words that probably don't sound very Christmassy. But please bear with me. I promise this gets better. The two words are separation and isolation. I told you they weren't very Christmassy. Most of us have known the dictionary definition of these terms since a young age. But I hope that all of us have had as few experiences as possible that give us a really visceral sense of what they mean. But these past two years have given us all a much greater sense of what these words mean. And I doubt I'm alone in saying I don't particularly like it. We humans are communal creatures. We were made to have all sorts of contact with one another. And it is essential to our overall health and well-being. Finding ourselves in a situation where we have had to place strict limits on that contact has been very difficult and, for some, outright painful. And these times have even brought, in some cases, a sense of separation and isolation with people who are near and dear. Sometimes we find ourselves living in different psychological universes from people we know and love well. While it has been particularly tough these past two years, this sort of pain is not entirely new. Countless volumes have been written on the strange scene with Adam, Eve, and the serpent in the third chapter of Genesis, but they all boil down to a single premise. Somehow, some way, primordial humanity became estranged from God and estranged from one another. We began to experience separation and isolation, which are quite the opposite of the life we were made for. Now today we celebrate another extraordinary scene from the Bible. But this one is as bright as that scene from Genesis was discouraging. We celebrate the scene of a newborn baby swaddled in his mother's arms, a tiny little human being in a Bethlehem stable. And in that tiny human being, God did something that probably could not have been done any other way. Sure, in our state of estrangement from God and from one another, we can certainly have spiritual and mystical experiences of connection, but these can only take us so far. We are creatures of flesh and blood, and at some point it takes flesh and blood to drive certain points home. And in the baby Jesus, this is exactly what God was up to. In Jesus, we have God visiting the creation as a person of flesh and blood and doing what only a person of flesh and blood can do. In Jesus, God was able to physically touch people, to look people in the eye, to speak with people in an audible, understandable voice. Try as we may, there is no adequate replacement for such acts. In order to reach into the depth of human souls and to bring light to that lonely, isolated spot, 
one must in some way have human contact. So the Christmas miracle is such good news for a time such as this. Most of us probably now know all too well what the words separation and isolation mean not only in theory, but how they feel. But in the midst of it, this holy day reminds us of a powerful truth. We are the visited planet. We are the ones who have been gifted with a visitation from God. Not merely God as disembodied spirit, but a creator who engages with creatures of flesh and blood as a person of flesh and blood. This is God's way of overcoming the separation and isolation that plague us creatures. In visiting us as one of us, God undoes the primordial tragedy that separates us both from our maker and from each other. And in addition to being good news in which we can revel, the Christmas miracle is also a profound exhortation. It is perhaps encapsulated best in these famous words of St. Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body on earth now but yours. Jesus didn't just come in the flesh to bless a small group of people at a particular point in history in the ancient Near East. He came to bless the whole earth at all times and in all places. And in order for that mission to be accomplished, we must do our part. To be a people whose lives reflect the Christmas miracle, we must at all times do everything in our power to overcome separation and isolation. This does not mean we must always agree with one another. This does not mean we have to take undue risks. It doesn't even mean that we always have to like one another. It simply means we must always remain connected with each other, just as in his birth, Jesus connected heaven with earth. We cannot simply shut others out and forget the common humanity that we share. No matter how tempting it may be to do otherwise, we must gaze upon others as if our eyes were those of Christ and touch them with our hands as if they were his own. Doing what I just described is extraordinarily challenging in times like these, but that makes it all the more important. It demands of us levels of faith and creativity that we may have never plumbed before. But let's always remember where the power comes from. We are the visited planet. We are the species upon whom God has gazed and whom God has touched as one of us. And the power of that event radiates outward from Jerusalem and forward through the millennia right to our current time and place. May you feel and know that power 
as you contemplate the miracle of Christmas. May it give you everything you need to perceive the wonder of this moment and to meet the challenges of our time. Merry Christmas. Let us pray with joy to our risen Lord, saying, O incarnate Word, hear our prayer. Incarnate Lord, we thank you for the church you have built here on earth to witness your power and love. Thank you for your presence in the lives of all your faithful people. Today, we lift up to your blessing all people and assemblies who gather in the divine name. We remember especially the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and we pray for the holy land of your birth. We remember also the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, including Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, 
our bishop. O incarnate word, hear our prayer. Incarnate Lord, we thank you for the vision you offered in your birth and radiant light, life of that day when every nation and people will live in perfect peace and harmony. Thank you for giving all peoples, especially those in positions of public trust and power, a desire for that day and the will and means to help bring it about. We remember before you Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all those who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. Thank you for your guidance and providence over every nation and its leaders. O oh, incarnate word, hear our prayer. Thank you, incarnate word, for overcoming the world's troubles and fears. Thank you for keeping us focused on you during these troubled times and all the challenges they bring. We remember before you today all those who care for others in body, mind, and spirit. Thank you for pouring out your love and protection upon them and upon us. O incarnate word, hear our prayer. Incarnate Lord, we thank you for gathering this congregation of St. Bartholomew's together in awe of you and affection for one another. We thank you for those in our weekly cycle of prayer. Mary L., Steve L., Sandra and Michael L., as well as those in military service. For Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, Taylor, and Drake. O incarnate word, hear our prayer. Thank you, O incarnate one, that you are our great physician. We thank you for the healing mercies you pour into the lives of all who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. We remember before you all who have requested our prayers, and they are Angela, Angela Olivia, Becky, Brett M., Kathy, Dave, Doris, Aaron, Esteban, Helga, James, Julia, Ben and Catherine, Kip, Linda, Marion, Marge, Marcia, Nina, Michael, Robert, Sally, Richard, Yvonne, Deacon Jennifer and family, the Payne family, and the Thayer Moore families. O oh, incarnate word, hear our hear prayer. Our Thank you, O oh, incarnate word, that in joining heaven with earth, you have paved the way for us creatures of earth to enjoy you forever in heaven. We thank you for all your servants who have entered into your nearer presence. We pray for Lo Rosalie, Glennis, Alex, and Mark. May all the departed rest in paradise and rise on the last day to the life immortal. O oh, incarnate word, hear our prayer. And now, O oh, incarnate word, with grateful hearts, we offer you thanks for all of the blessings, yet unspoken, that you have given us. And we bring before you with hearts and voices, all of our prayer concerns.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.